Things are not going well for San Diego Comic-Con, and who better than to talk to about this than Aaron Sparrow, who used to be on the SDCC committee and probably knows all the ins and outs of SDCC and what's uh, what's the big draws there. How you doing, Aaron? I'm doing really well, Wes. How's it going? It's not going too bad. Certainly better for myself than San Diego Comic-Con. We knew that Marvel wasn't going to be there. They weren't going to do their traditional Paul H. panel, which was already going to be something going against them, but things have gotten much worse over the past few days. Amid the writer strike and possible SAG strike, several studios have preemptively nixed plans for a robust presence at San Diego Comic-Con this year. Disney and its subsidiaries, Marvel Studios and Lucasfilm, are not planning any panels, cutting off the chance to showcase the cast for the upcoming projects like the Marvel's Loki Season 2, Ahsoka and Haunted Mansion, HBO, which has True Detective Season 4 and House of the Dragon Season 2 still in production, isn't going. Nor are Sony Pictures and Universal Pictures, who also have The Exorcist coming out later this year. Those are some heavy hitters and some of the things that absolutely draw people into San Diego Comic-Con every single year. They don't even really have anything on their schedule at this point. No, it's uh, it's really, uh, it's I'm sure they're scrambling uh, to fill that space. Um, But, you know, it's... You've got to expect this. You got to expect that this is going to happen. You know, you've got a writer strike going on. You've got projects delayed. You've got Marvel in shambles. You've got you know Star Wars is basically dead. Uh, you've got Warner Brothers just had a three. You know they're probably going to lose two hundred million or more on the Flash. Uh, you know everything that would normally be programming for San Diego is absolutely collapsing. And everybody's pulling out. Everybody's pulling out faster than Carrie Brownstein. What? Pull up. Who is this guy? I'm the pull-out king. They call me, of course, the pull-out king because uh, of these um, uh, sofas that uh, pull out into a bed. You know, you've just got this this perfect storm of a situation. You know, where every company's losing money. Why are they gonna Why are they gonna spend the money to go to San Diego? It doesn't move the needle. We already know that. You can go and you can put on all these. You know, this big show at San Diego. You can pay to bring down your celebrities. You can pay for their hotel stays. You can spend all of this money. And it doesn't do jack shit for you because the trailer that they show at the con, it's online within minutes. People can go and watch it there. You know, the only people that care about this are the people that are worried about FOMO. You know, I've got to be there and I got to be in Hall H and I got to see it and I got to see Tom Hiddleston walk out and tell us about the next way that they're going to ruin his character. Well, the worst part is the people that have already bought their tickets because it did sell out, I believe, in less than an hour. But now you're having a mass exodus of all the things that actually bring people to San Diego Comic-Con in 2023. It's not really about comic books anymore. The only thing that I can think they could possibly fill the void with all this stuff is more anime and manga at this point. If they even have time to put that together. You know, we're so close to the show. Reaching out to companies that didn't plan on being there, didn't plan on doing any programming, you know, that's that's a that's a lot of moving parts to uh, to get together. So I think you're just going to see a lot of those halls shut down. When reached by Variety, Comic-Con spokesperson David Glasner provided a statement that avoids saying anything definitive about how San Diego Comic-Con may look in the wake of an actor strike, but does make clear the organizers expect to go on with the event regardless. He said, with regards to the strike and its possible effects on Comic-Con, We tend to refrain from speculation or forecasting. I will say our hope is for a speedy resolution that will prove beneficial to all parties and allow everyone to continue the work they love. Until then, we continue to diligently work on our summer event in the hopes of making it as fun, educational, and celebratory as in years past. It's not really going to affect them this year. Like I said, they're already sold out, but this is absolutely going to damage their reputation next year and years to come, especially if a lot of these big studios don't continue to come back because they they basically kicked out all the comic books and, and the comic book fans and said, we wanted pop culture fans. Yeah. And during the, uh, during the pandemic, you know, one of the big things that's, that drives attendance to uh, San Diego is the exclusive toys, the exclusive items that you can pick up, you know, so that people can flip them on eBay. Uh, and, you know, a lot of that is gone, you know, because the companies have realized, wait a minute, why are we shipping all of this product you know, and paying the expense of that, then selling it there, paying employees to stand there and, and sell it, you know, and paying them overtime to be there, paying for their hotels, paying for their per diems. You know, we're, we're spending all that money when really all we have to do is launch the stuff on our own website and we don't even have to like leave the warehouse. We can just ship it straight out of the warehouse and we're good to go. So, you know, that's going away. You know, the, the bloom is really kind of off the rose uh, as far as San Diego. You know, you'll always have a big crowd that wants to go. You'll always have a big cosplay crowd that want to go on, show off their cosplay creations and walk around and not spend any money, you know, with the vendors, you know, you'll always kind of have that. But I think that we may 
now be seeing the you know attrition starting. We may be seeing these events get smaller. You know, um, they're less appealing. They're less interested as studios realize there's not really a benefit to them aside from going and having their you know their egos stroked. But it's a huge expense to do it. So, as somebody that was on the San Diego Comic Con committee, was this by design? Because it feels like going all in on becoming a movie con and television con rather than a comic con for the most part. It, you know, like I said, it blew up in their faces. But was it something that they that they really wanted? Let's bring in all this stuff outside of there and they'll take the place of the things that actually grew what this con is and see if we can replace those people with something more exciting, I guess. I mean, I think so. There's there's some really good people that still work uh, at the convention, you know, still work uh, on the committee. Uh, but largely, you know, the board, they're very disconnected. They don't even know who, you know who's working in comic books right now. Um, you know, when I was there, uh, you know, and it's been, uh, it's been several years since, uh, since I was on the committee, but you know, while I was there, comics were still good, you know, there were still good comics being produced. So there were still up and comers that, you know, you would try to get guested to the show, but it's, it's always the, you know, it's always the same guests, the ones that they know from the past. So you're going to see Mark Avenier there every year, you know, you're going to see, uh, Sergio Aragon is there every year and in Sergio's case, deservedly so, uh, you know, just a perma guest. Um, you know, he's earned it. But, you know, they, they I remember sitting on committees and I was trying to get people like, you know, at the time, people who had even drawn like covers for the, the programs and things like that. It's like I was trying to get them guested to the show so that, you know, all, all of their expenses were paid, you know, people that would actually be a draw. And there was just a heavy resistance. And meanwhile, they would be, you know, suggesting people that, you know, yeah, this person wrote like three episodes of The Simpsons, you know, back in the in the first year that, you know, we, we should guest them and, you know, it would get voted in. And I was like, well, how many butts is that person going to put in the seat? No one cares about writers on a, on a TV show, no. you know, like not, you know, that, that's not going to be a huge draw. And, you know, even the programming, I was, uh, you know, I, I fought to get Tournament of Nerds there, which was a lot of fun. And we got a really good response. Like the, uh, the, the show was always, we always had to turn people away at the rooms that they would give us, you know, and it was basically a comedy show. And I had to fight to get that there. And uh, I, I remember saying in the in the meeting, I was like, why don't we cancel one of these boring panels, like, you know, editing comics the boom way. I'm an editor at boom, and I don't care about editing the comics the boom way. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't even go to that panel. Nobody gives a crap about that. You know, why don't you give us that room for something that's actually entertaining? But it's a lot of people who are just stuck in their ways. They don't really know the industry anymore. There's a lot of people there that are just, you know, they're, they're nerds and they're kind of social outcasts. And they're finally connected to something cool because Hollywood recognizes us and they feel like being connected to that makes them cool and makes them important. Um, you know, it, 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 all, it all comes down to ego and narcissism. You know, I'm seeing a lot of people that are optimistic that maybe San Diego Comic-Con will be more about comics moving forward. Even like a Mark Miller is hoping that maybe comics will be pushed to the forefront. But this is probably the worst time in the history of the world for San Diego Comic-Con to try to do an about face and maybe represent more comic book stuff you know, at the con itself, because there's nothing really good out there for the most part in mainstream comic books. What are you going to talk about? The really boring, not great selling Batman series, the Spider-Man series that no one really likes, the fact that the X-Men suck pretty much across the board. The only like A-list character that's doing well right now really is Superman. And we're seeing the sales dwindle and dwindle and dwindle as we're seeing maybe like indie creators kind of blow up like they should be trying to get like an Eric July or somebody in there because he's actually proven that he can put butts in seats and people actually go out there and support him. But if they're trying to court like Marvel and DC comics, there's just not a whole lot to put out there that's actually going to get anyone excited and want to visit even one of the panels. No, it. Uh, I remember the most depressing thing uh, that I ever heard at Comic-Con was uh, I was walking down the aisle and... Uh, a guy's wife said that she grabbed his arm. And she said, well, hey, what's what's down there? And he goes, oh, don't worry about that. That's just comic books. And they went off, you know, in like another direction. And I was like, if there was ever a more perfect, you know, uh, distillation of the attitude that, uh, you know, just the general public, you know, and not even them, but just the board of Comic-Con has about comics. You know, they're just kind of the redheaded stepchild. They shrink Artist Alley, you know, every year. You know, people are basically at like this little two-foot card table, and now they expect them to pay for it. You can't even get out to go to the bathroom. You know, everybody's just packed in there, you know, like it's some kind of sweatshop. You know, it, uh, I, I've, I've made the joke before that, like, you know, Artist Alley is going to be held down the street in, like, a Chili's bathroom. You know, that's where you're going to have to walk <laughs> down to see the, your favorite artists because that's the amount of space that they're devoting to it. Uh, you know, it's just, it's not about comics. It's not about artists. It's about 
Hollywood and it's about, isn't it great that Hollywood finally recognizes this? Uh, and that's the whole problem that has infected comics is the mainstream attention has made comics, it's been to comics detriment. It's worn away what made comics special. And now it's just like, we've just got a bunch of people that want Netflix deals and that are coming in because, you know, they think that it can get them to that next level or it can, you know, advance their career into something that they actually want to do. And they're writing really bad comics. Yeah, what are you going to promote from Marvel or DC? They should be reaching out to people like Eric July. They should do like Dallas Fan Expo and bring down Nerd Roddick and Geeks and Gamers and these guys that actually have these, you know, they should make it kind of a VidCon as well and bring these YouTubers in who talk about comics and pop culture. At least then you would get a crowd. At least then you'd be able to pack a panel. But it was a place where up and coming comic book creators, whether it was writers, artists, you know, colorists, uh, letters, whatever, you could go in there, you can present your work, maybe get your name known and potentially get some work down the line. You know, and there's just not those opportunities there anymore. And, and that's probably another big detriment to comic books itself. The entire industry of, of creators feels like it's this weird little echo chamber where everyone wants to tell the exact same story over and over and over again. And there's no place like a San Diego Comic-Con to really celebrate comic books and go out there and get your name out there and get known, you know, break in. Yeah, no, but that's not what it's about anymore. It's about uh, it's about some people feeling like uh, they get to hobnob with celebrities. Uh, you know, it, it's it's I, I kind of view Comic Con as uh, the way that CM Punk viewed uh, WWE in his uh, pipe bomb promo. It's like maybe when these people die, you know, the the, the company will finally be in good hands. But uh, you know, it's probably that's probably not going to happen. What it really needs is it needs an infusion of young blood. It needs an infusion of people that you know are passionate about this stuff. It, it needs people like you know the YouTubers who actually care about pop culture and care about these things, care about the medium of comic books. Uh, but they're never going to do that. They're never going to do that. They're never going to have like an Eric July or a uh, or a critical drinker or any of those guys because those guys are critical of Hollywood and they want to suck up to Hollywood as much as possible. A lot of the people that that actually know what's going on and that have figured out how to actually talk to audiences and grow your audience and get them excited and stuff. They're obviously not working at DC or Marvel. They get, those guys don't know how to do anything with social media. They don't know how to market anything. They probably could use the young blood of people that actually know how to say what they're going to do, present it to people as potential customers and get them excited and actually show up and put some money down. They are going to make money this year at San Diego Comic-Con. No doubt about it. They already sold out. But I think in next year, the years ahead, they're going to be in a lot, a lot of trouble. The problem is that vendors don't make any money at San Diego Comic-Con. They've seen their dollars shrinking and shrinking and shrinking year to year. And that's why people are pulling out. Sideshow's not even doing a booth this year. It's not worth it to them to come and show off all their wares because of the expense. And, you know, San Diego, because they've gotten too big for their britches, they keep jacking the price, jacking the price, jacking the price. I know a lot of artists who dropped out after last year because they got the new price sheets and they were like, based on what I made this year, it's not worth it. And they're they're dropping out. So you're going to see more and more people leave, I think. And uh, you're going to see a course correction in kind of the hype of San Diego Comic-Con. It's a shame because San Diego is a beautiful city. It's one of the best cities to have a comic convention in. Um, you know, and like we've discussed before, they always say that, you know, oh, well, maybe we'll leave to try and, you know, strong arm uh, more concessions out of the city. But if the city ever called their bluff, they'd be screwed because there's nowhere else that they can go. You know, they're stuck there, but they like to play the game that, you know, oh, we might go to Vegas. We might go to we might go to Anaheim. It's never going to happen. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll notice that we're normally two to three years ahead of the trend. If we point out a problem. Two or three years later, mainstream media will actually acknowledge it and be like, yeah, that really is a problem because we're always on the cutting edge here. When it comes to San Diego Comic-Con, it's kind of weird. We're only about 12 to 24 months ahead of the curve because we already called this last year. Aaron and I sat down and had a more in-depth conversation about San Diego Comic-Con and why it was right for failure. Definitely check this out right here. There's also a link in the video description.